ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Sailor Sam is the smartest boy who ever shouted ship a high. He can weather any storm that blows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Good old Cheerios. They got go. So nourishing because they're made from oats with minerals, vitamins, and proteins that your body needs. Yes, indeed. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day off right. Does all sorts of good things for your body. Helps you have strong bones and muscles, good red blood, and healthy nerves. So every morning, take on a bowl of Cheerios and milk for real go power. You like that wonderful toasted oat flavor, too. Downright delicious. Come to think of it, Cheerios is one of the tastiest muscle-building foods you can eat. Try Cheerios and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! The westward movement of the railroad was bringing great changes to the frontier territories and was looked upon with disfavor, not only by the Indians, but the tough outlaw element who had run things more or less their own way. After the difficulties at Raton Pass had been overcome, the railroad pushed on toward Santa Fe. Along the right of way, a new army post, Fort Union, had been established. In a hideout not far from Fort Union, Ryder Hutchins, a noted gunman and outlaw leader, walked the floor as he spoke to his followers. Men, I, I learned the major at Fort Union is expecting a company of troopers to arrive by railroad soon. That doggone major's going to give us trouble, Ryder. That's right. That's right. That's right. Major Alger swore to use that company of troopers to hunt this gang as soon as they arrive. What do you figure on doing, Ryder? See to it that the troopers don't get through, Kirk. Right. Yeah. How are you going to stop them? By blowing up the bridge across Stony Canyon two miles from here. What? When the train's going over. Oh, wait a Holy mackerel, Ryder. They find out we did it, the six of us will be hunted for murder by the whole army. Oh, now, wait, wait, listen what? to me. The renegade Sioux are going to help us. My friend Fleetfoot got the chief to agree. I promise them they can loot the wreckage. And they're always glad to do anything to hinder the railroad. Mm -hmm. I figure when news of the wreck gets out, the Sioux will be blamed. Why don't we just leave this territory and forget the troopers, Ryder? Sure. Oh, because I also learned that troop train is bringing a large shipment of federal gold bound for Santa Fe. It should be picked up by a Mexican military escort and taken to Mexico. We'll get that gold. Then leave the territory. Where did you get all the information? From Jake, the telegraph operator at Fort Union. He'll ride with us to the canyon, then stay with the gang. When's the train coming through? Yeah. Day after tomorrow in the afternoon. We'll meet Fleetfoot and the Sioux in the canyon at noon. Get everything ready. In his headquarters at Fort Union, Major Alger sat at his desk talking to his aide, Lieutenant Jones. Lieutenant... I've had verification that the company of troopers will arrive day after tomorrow. Are the barracks ready for them? Yes, sir. I've had word from the colonel at Fort Dodge that he's requested the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend to come here and help us trail the Hutchins gang. They're due to arrive within the next two days. I've heard of that masked man, sir. With him and his friend to help us, it 
shouldn't take long to locate the Hutchins gang. Yes, I agree. His arrival, none of the troops have been kept secret. So we should be able to take Hutchins by surprise. That's right, sir. Well, I'll go with you now and inspect the barracks. Very well, Major. That night, Ryder Hutchins and his men were visited at their hideout by the fort telegrapher, Jake. Hi, Jake. Didn't expect to see you again before you joined us in the canyon. I got some more news for you, Ryder. Yeah, what? <laughs> Telegram came from the colonel at Fort Dodge saying a couple of hombres are coming to Fort Union to help trail the gang. Yeah, now that's nothing to worry about. We've been trailed by experts in the past. Yeah, maybe. But the two that are coming are worth worrying about. Who are they? A masked hombre known as the Lone Ranger. Oh, and an Indian who rides with him. Oh, Lone Ranger? Ranger. Right, Thunder, those two are worth worrying yeah, about. Right. I don't like yeah, it, Ryder. Right. Neither do I. I'll get word to Fleetfoot to have the Sioux watch for him and see to it they don't reach the fort. I'm not going to let the Lone Ranger or anybody else interfere with my plan. Hey, Jake. When are they supposed to get to the fort, do you know? Within the next two days. Maybe they won't arrive before we wreck the train. But if they do, those two hombres will run into trouble they didn't expect. The next morning, Ryder Hutchins went to the renegade Sioux camp and talked to Fleetfoot. Now, the masked man in Indian I told you about worked with the law. We got to make sure they don't get through to the fort. Ah, uh, to watch for them. Good. When we meet in the canyon tomorrow, make sure to have some braves watching the trail to see that nobody comes along. Uh, and another thing, make sure after the wreck that none of the troopers get away. Ah, uh, to kill all those who not get killed in wreck. <laughs> good, good. I'll see you tomorrow at noon. Get up! Ah! The following day, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode the trail toward Fort Union. The trail skirted the end of the canyon, half a mile from the bridge, then led back toward the railroad tracks on the fort side. Fort Union is only a few miles from the canyon, Tonto. We'll soon be there. That's good. According to the colonel, Ryder Hutchins and his gang are causing a great deal of trouble in this territory. Why, Major at Fort, not take troopers, hunt for gang before now? Oh, Fort Union is new, Toto. Up to now, it's been manned by only a small garrison of troops. But the colonel said more troops are on the way. Oh, that's good. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Meanwhile, in the canyon, under the wooden bridge, Ryder and his men attached many large cans of blasting powder to the wooden beams, then ran a single long fuse along the floor of the canyon to a safe distance behind a formation of large boulders. Okay, it's ready. I hope you have it timed right, Ryder. Don't worry. I figured this out mighty careful. I've ridden here several days in a row, and I noticed that all trains coming west Blow the whistle just before they enter a cut a short distance back from the canyon. Then it takes them exactly three minutes to reach the bridge. When we light the fuse here, it'll reach the explosive in three minutes. It should blow when the train's just starting onto the bridge. Sure. Sure. That means the whole thing will crash into the canyon. Right. Then the Sioux who are waiting up the canyon will move in. After that, we'll grab the gold. Now, all we got to do is wait. Hey, right it. What about Jake, the Fort Telegraph operator? Isn't he supposed to join us here? Well, <laughs> I told him to, Spike, but uh, I kind of figured Jake's usefulness is over. I don't trust him too much. You see, I uh, I just neglected to tell Fleetfoot about him. What's that got to do with it? Well, uh, Fleetfoot has some Sioux Braves watching the trail between here and the fort. So I figure when Jake comes along... Those two will finish him off. <laughs> That'll leave one less to share the loser. Huh? Right. <laughs> Jake headed along the trail from the fort to the canyon. Suddenly, the Indians! Get up there! Get up!
With a canyon behind them, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode the trail toward the fort. Suddenly, a horseman came around the bend ahead, closely followed by four Sioux. Hold your hold! Use your guns, Tonto! Uh-huh. The four Indians swerved quickly and disappeared over a rise. Tonto, that rider fell from his horse with an arrow in his back. We go to him. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy, uh, My gun. Easy, fella, easy. Uh, uh, Ryder, he said I get through all right. The Sioux was supposed to watch for you. For us? Yes, yes. That, that mask, you, you're the Lone Ranger. I... <laughs> oh. Him get bad wound, Kimasari. Yes, I know. You uh, mentioned Ryder. Ryder, how you gang? Oh, I know I'm done for. They're going to blow up Ridge. Troop train waiting with Sue in the canyon. <laughs> He's dead, Donna. Uh, he said Hutchins and his gang are waiting with Sue in the canyon. The troop train is almost due. They'll cover the body with branches and come back later. All right, now we must stop the train from reaching that bridge and get a help to capture the gang. That's right. I'll try to stop the train, Toto. You not have time right round end the canyon. I'll find a way to get across. Meantime, you ride to the fort. Tell the Major what we heard. He may be able to get here in time. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one that the happy people have to say. Weeding, oh, weeding, and do, 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 and okay, okay. Take champions down south. They sure enough know about Wheaties. The Southland's favorite Wheaties fan is Musio, known as Stan the Man, because when he swings his mighty bat, he nearly knocks that baseball flat. Another Southland pride and joy is Bobby Lane, a Wheaties boy. Because when he starts to turn on steam, he's sure a one-man football team. Just ask Stan Musial or Bobby Lane. They know the secret of Wheaties energy. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties. And you'll be doing doo doo and all okay. to continue. After quickly covering the body, Tonto left for the fort, while the Lone Ranger started back to the canyon. Easy, big fella. Come on, tell me. In spite of the fact that time was precious, the Lone Ranger realized that if he tried to cross the bridge, he and Silver would be a perfect target for the outlaws and Sue in the canyon. He decided to depend upon the great horse Silver's extraordinary speed and stamina to take him around the end of the canyon in time to stop the train. Faster, big fellow, faster! Come The big stallion exerted every effort to comply with the command of his master. He reached the end of the canyon where the trail sloped down past the canyon entrance, then continued up the opposite side. The Lone Ranger saw several Sioux Indians coming up from the canyon floor toward him. He quickly drew to a halt. Hold it, hold it. The masked man looked back. Others, too, were coming behind him. Trying to trap me. Quickly, the Lone Ranger looked around. The canyon narrowed at that point, and he saw that the distance across to the opposite rim of the canyon was at least eight feet. He realized grimly that a miss meant certain death a hundred feet down. All right, big fella. Without hesitation, he rode Silver a short distance back from the canyon rim. We'll have to jump for it or we'll be trapped. With the two braves racing from opposite directions, the Lone Ranger gave the magnificent stallion free rein. Come on, Silver! Arrows flew thick and fast, but fell short as the masked man approached the yawning chasm. Without breaking stride, Up, Silver! Silver took off in a high, graceful jump and landed safely on the opposite side. Realizing that their ponies couldn't possibly make the jump, the two, with howls of rage and frustration, pulled rain at the edge of the canyon, while the Lone Ranger continued on his way toward the railroad track. Good boy, big fella. Come on, When he reached the railroad, the Lone Ranger followed the tracks away from the canyon 
stopped almost a mile from the canyon bridge. Who's over? Oh, easy. Anybody caught? The masked man's next problem was to stop the train. He piled dried brush across the tracks. Then, hearing the train whistle in the distance, he struck a match and lighted the brush. Waiting in the canyon near the bridge, Ryder Hutchins and his men also heard the train whistle. The train's whistling for the cut. It'll reach the bridge in three minutes. I'll light the fuse. There it goes. Now we'll just wait till things happen. Yeah, Ryder, I heard engines yipping a while ago. Yeah, I heard them too. <laughs> I reckon they were after Jake. That yipping came from the left towards the pass. Fleetfoot and his braves are waiting out there behind boulders. In a few minutes, men, it'll happen. Then we'll move in and get the gold. Meantime, the troop train ran through the cut and approached the big pile of burning brush on the track. Hey, Tom, look ahead. Something's blazing way up in the middle of the track. What do you suppose it is? Turn the van home, but I better stop. I was told to blow the whistle if I spotted trouble. So here goes. The minute we stop, the troops will pile off to see what's up. Yeah, I'm almost hoping it's a holdup, because I can see the surprise on the outlaw's faces when a whole company of troopers appear. Uh-huh. Hey, look. Coming from behind those big boulders, a masked man leading a white horse. Well, you don't think he figured on holding up the train alone, do you? <laughs> Well, if he did, he's about to get the surprise of his life. The soldiers are getting off the train and running this way. The Lone Ranger, leading Silver, walked from cover and approached the motionless engine. He held one hand high, palm outward in the Indian sign of friendliness. Look, a masked hombre. Why, guns are holding. What's the meaning of this? We have you covered. Hello, Captain Barry. Do you know my name, huh? Why have you stopped us out here? I stopped the train to prevent a great disaster, Captain. Perhaps. My men have you covered. We'll take you into custody. What was that? The bridge over Stony Canyon was blown up. The explosion was evidently time to go off as the train was causing it. Why, we could have... No one would have escaped, Captain. The outlaw and two are waiting in the canyon to make sure of that. Of course, they leave now, knowing the train has stopped in time. You? How did you know? I know the colonel at Fort Dodge. He mentioned you were coming to Fort Union in charge of a company. That's how I knew your name. I remember now. You're the masked man he rode about to Major Alger. That's right. Do your men have their horses on the train? Yes, and stock cars attached to the rear. I suggest you get them and try to capture the men who blew up the bridge. My Indian friend went to Fort Union to report the outlaw's plan. We'll unload the horses at once. All right, men, let's get moving. <laughs> In the canyon, Ryder and his men discussed what had happened as the Sioux stood nearby listening. Hey, Thunder, we all heard that train whistle. Should have reached the bridge just when the fuse fed off the powder. What are we going to do now? We better get away from here while we can. Yeah, I reckon you're right. The troopers on the train must have heard that explosion. They'll come to investigate. We take Sioux Braves back to Indian camp. All right, Fleetfoot. We'll go part of the way with you. Then we'll go on to Santa Fe. Let's get going, men. The outlaws and the Sioux rode along the trail that led to Fort Union, intending to take a cross trail a little further on. As they started up a rise, Spike suddenly pointed and spoke. Ryder, look! Some troopers heading this way. Must be from the fort. Yeah, about 15 or so. Take cover, everybody! With these Sioux to help us, we can take care of those troopers. Oh, oh, oh. Quickly, the outlaws and the Sioux dismounted and took cover as the troopers opened fire. We can take them off from behind these boulders. Let them help! A small band of troopers also took cover, but not before several were wounded. Meantime, the Sioux crept through the woods in an effort to surround the Major and his group. The Major spoke to Tonto. They're too many for us, Tonto. 
We can reach the horses. We have to try an orderly retreat before our escape is cut off by the Indians. It's not easy carry wounded, get the horses. But it's bad if Sue move through trees and get behind troopers. I know, but we'll... Look, Tonto! The Lone Ranger and the company of troopers galloped into the fight. Within a short time, the battle was over. Ryder and his men, most of them wounded, were tied to their horses. Fleetfoot and his braves were disarmed and stood sullenly waiting to be taken to the reservation and punished. The Major was saying, We'll turn Ryder Hutchinson and his gang over to the sheriff at the Fort Union settlement. Then we'll send Fleetfoot and his braves to the reservation. Major, the two fatally wounded a man on the trail a while ago. We've learned from Hutchinson's men he was a telegraph operator at Fort Union. Oh, Jake. Wonder what he is doing away from the fort without permission. Perhaps Ryder Hutchins will answer that later, Major. I'm grateful to you for what you've done, sir. You and Tonto saved the day for us. The masked man saved our lives, Major. In a few more minutes, we'd have been crossing that bridge when it was blown up. What about the gold shipment? I left men to guard it until a wagon can be sent to pick it up, sir. Good. We'll send back a wagon as soon as possible. Tonto and I'll go back along the trail now, Major, and get the body of the telegrapher. Then we'll come on to the fort. Very well, sir. We'll see you later, then. Adios. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, sir. Uh, Let's go, Toto. Easy, sir. Easy, Toto. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hadn't it been for that mask, hombre, our plans would have worked out just right. That's enough out of you, Ryder. They ought to string him up, Major. <laughs> easy, man. Easy, easy. I know how you feel, especially after the narrow escape you've just had. But Ryder Hutchins and his men will be tried for more than one murder. They'll eventually be hanged, legally. Thank heaven there are fine, true Americans in the West, men of great courage and determination, who are ever ready to save lives instead of to take them. Such a man is the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.